My name is Raul Brass, and I work at the podiatry department at Root and Riddle Equine Hospital, um, Lexington, Kentucky. Saying that, I would like to, um, before we get carried away with some of the cases, I would like to present. I would like to acknowledge um, the people I work with, especially you know the clinic, Root and Riddle Equine Hospital, and the staff at the podiatry department, where we have a couple of veterinarians, including Dr. Morris and Dr. Dryden, and Dr. Agney, and Dr. Beasley and our failures um, that were, uh, help us out throughout the day as well as Josh, Jeff, and Stuart. Um, with no further delay, I would like to go ahead and, and show a video of a case um, that presented to the clinic. It was a weanling, a young filly that uh, showed up to the clinic with a history of uh, an abnormal gait. And I apologize for the quality of this video. It will move around a little bit, but I would like you to pay attention to how this filly try to, you know, um, walk around and obviously she's gonna step over that change in concrete there so she was jumping over that, but, and I'll play it one more time. But when she presented, she presented with that history. She presented with a history of, uh, of normal gait. You know, first thing that comes to your mind when she start walking like this is there's something wrong neurological. Um, that's the first thing that came to our, to our mind but when we looked at her. But when we get further with the history, we realize what was going on. And if you look into this next picture, uh, in this next slide, it's pretty obvious that she had, she had an abnormal hoof and it was completely distorted. Um, and there, obviously, there was some cornification in there. There was remnants of a foot, um, but you can see the difference from that left hind and, and that right hind. Uh, and actually, if you take, pay attention to that picture on your left, you see how, um, she developed um, an angular deformity due to the asymmetry of how she had to load her uh, hind limbs, um, as you can see on that left hind. So we get a little bit more into it, and by, by this stage we know uh, it's pretty much straightforward, um, localized to that foot, we'll say. So we went ahead and took a radiograph, and we want to take a radiograph. Um, I would like to present this uh, next picture, this next slide and asked the audience, um, what's, what's your diagnosis? Do you see something abnormal here? Um, and when you look into this radiograph, you realize that this horse, this, this woman actually was born, is missing his coffin bone. There's no coffin bone in this, in this foot. Um, that's probably why this, this foot is so distorted or just remnants of it. At least there was um, something of um, cornification where she can protect it and walk around, but it was pretty obvious that, that by then she was, she was born like this. Um, the unfortunate part of this case is that she, besides the abnormal hoof, the abnormal gait, she was a pretty happy horse. I mean, the quality of life it wasn't, wasn't bad at all. I mean, obviously it was recommended that we, they didn't carry away and try to breed this horse just in case genetics were involved. You don't want to go ahead and, and, and continue to breed for this. But uh, we took radiograph over the other feet and everything was uh, pretty much normal. It was just this uh, congenital uh, defect. Um, so what we ended up doing in this case was, and as you can see in this, this couple of pictures, um, we try to trim it to kind of make it look like a foot, let's put it like that, just kind of get some sort of kind of um, foot in there where we can put up something, a shoe that will support the limb and, and facilitate and share the weight on that, you know, high end of, the, of that horse. Because um, if you look into that picture on, on the screen on the right, there's a picture from front to back, you see how it's all uh, the same thing, just kind of like a angular deformity as well. So we had to come up with a shoe that will uh, provide some support um, to help to help to um, this this horse to move around, uh, so you can see in that top picture on the on the left, we came up with uh, which is a what well, it looks like a shoe, but it was you know we made a aluminum plate that we decided to go ahead and glue on in the in the filly, and so you can see in the pictures on the bottom has a little bit of lateral support, and now the leg looks a little bit straighter, that way uh, the filly can continue to grow without further complications or without further angular deformities, I should say. Um, 
She came through the clinic a couple of times. We follow up with her, with her and uh, she did okay. I mean, it's obvious what she got going on after we looked into it, but it was a pretty strange uh, case. That's why I would like to, wanted to present this, um, this case when, when we're talking about a presentation of mystery, lameness. Um, so that was, that was the end on that case. And then this is uh, case number, number two. Um, we were called in to check on this, um, this foal, uh, it's probably around three months of age, and uh, what he seems to be pretty much straightforward, actually, you know, have a little bit of tendon laxity. Um, the toes and the hind feet were flipping up, and, um, you know, they actually the farm um, in Kentucky are pretty good about um, addressing and taking care of these horses, so they took, they took the challenge on their hand at the beginning, thinking that they were gonna get her better. Um, three months later, she, she was still not doing any better, so, they called me in because she was getting lame, because if you look into that next picture, um, this is just a close-up picture where you can see uh, on the left how she's flipping up the toes. But what happened with these horses is a lot of times they end up having a lot of, uh, you know, bruising and rubbing and, and, and on the heel bulbs, and they get sore from that. And if they can't walk because they're sore from that, they can't improve, they can't straighten those tendons. So we got called in to look into it, and, you know, again, we're talking about mystery lameness, so... Um, what well, we thought it was pretty much straightforward, uh, proceeded with my routine approach to these cases. You know, I was going to put some sort of kind of uh, heel extension, lay the fold down, and I went to try to trim the foot a little bit. When I get into trimming, I realized that this foal still had remnants of um, what we call the foal foot. You know, the foal was, it, when it's born, it's, it's soft, so it doesn't injury, injury the, the, the uterus. Um, while in pregnancy, but um, with a couple of days that, that epithelia is or conified, it looks like a hoof. Um, but in this case, when I start trimming, I realized that that was not the case. This has been going on for, for a long time, and it looks like blood in there, but it's more bruising. It's just abnormal. Um, so right away, you know, I knew that there was something wrong that I, I needed to go uh, with further diagnostics to see um, if there was any clues or uh, of hints of, so let me know what was going on with this fall. And I'm glad I did because then again, I'll present this case to, to the audience and ask you, what do you think is wrong with it? And you take a radiograph, and after you take a radiograph and you look into, into the cuffing bone, um, you see that this horse has, uh, this foal has rotation. This horse has founder, has laminitis, and, and it's a pretty uncommon, um, finding to see in foals. I mean, I've been in, the, in this profession for close to 10 years now, and, and I've seen only a handful of them, um, just because we see so many of them. But again, you know, we took, a, we took a radiograph and we came into the farm thinking that it's something straightforward. And uh, when we got a little bit um, into it, we, we realized and find out that it wasn't as we expected. Um, so we decided to provide some sort of kind of um, support and, and therapeutic shoeing to see since it's a foal. I mean, the foals I always say the best healing um, animal that could be out there. You know, when you have adults, it's a little, a little bit different. And then the other thing, when they're foals, you never know how they're going to turn out. So let's give them the chance and, and see how he responds. So we came up with a therapeutic shoe, it's just a shoe that uh, allow them to have a little bit of heel extension just because of the tendon laxity. We, we got two different problems. We got the laxity and then we also have the rotation. And then we have those tissues that are exposed that can actually get infected as well. So I had a, I wanted to have access. That's why you see in that picture um, the treatment plate shoe. Um, so the fold did okay. I mean, uh, continued to grow with um, with a better foot, a foot never got to be normal, uh, but it was it was abnormal. But again, you know, a bottom line quality of life. Um, the fold did really well, grew into a weanling, and, and it's been doing fine. It was a thoroughbred, and I gave them the prognosis of, you know, poor for racing. Um, but as long as they wanted a pasture horse, um, and the foal had a good quality of life, we carry on with the shoes. So that was the second case, and um, I decided to come up with another case, and. You know, there's this uh, an older an older geld and quarter horse that got into with a history of intermittent lameness. You know, the the horse will be doing okay, and then one day will become acutely lame. But uh, so you can see in this video, especially in the turns coming up in this video, 
um, he realizes his horse is pretty lame at the at the turns. Um, you know, and, and we localized the pain to the feet. Um, we blocked the feet and the horse was doing better. Uh, so you can see there are those lame steps. But uh, the interesting part of this case was that the horse will do well for a while and then suddenly will become lame for a couple of days, weeks, and then it'll get better and, and just kept going back and, up, back and forth and we're trying to figure out what was going on. After we localized the pain to the feet, you know, further diagnosis, we went ahead with the radiograph. Um, when we take the radiograph, third case, I'll try to present and ask the audience, I mean, what's your diagnosis? Do you see anything wrong in this, on this radiograph? If you look at that lateral view, there is a well-demarcated um, gas, uh, gas lucency in that, on that cuffing bone. And if you look into your dorsal ventral view, uh, your solar margin view, you can see, see um, that well-demarcated uh, circular um, gas lucency over there. So um, it was, it was um, then, you know, we realized that this horse had a pretty, pretty serious keratoma going on that we needed to go ahead and, and take out surgically. Um, our main concern being so, uh, so big and, and the stability of the cuffing bone after taking it off is there's always uh, a chance for that, for that bone to fracture as well, which, which uh, wasn't the case. But as you can see over here, um, surgically, with um, the surgery went pretty smooth. Uh, we went ahead and put um, threw a marker in there and, and took a radiograph and make sure that we were in the right spot and make a window. And after we moved, make a window, um, it was um, pretty easy to go ahead and um, take out that keratoma with any further complications. And we just then kept it clean as much as possible to try to prevent further uh, infection or further complications. And that horse went. Um, with no problems. Again, you know, it was an older horse, so all, all we wanted is just to have a good quality of life and have the horse to carry on with no, no lameness. So that was another successful, um, if you can say successful, case. And I believe that's probably my last case. So I would like to thank um, everybody involved in, in this project, and that's it.